Adobe XD has many different features, but Stacks is one of my favorites. In this video, I'm going to show you three different ways that you can use Stacks to optimize your workflow and to improve your productivity. Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel. And the first use of Stacks I really like is with navigations. So here I have this example. And if I double click inside, you can see that we have a stack and the distance between these items is 60. If I click right here and increase it to 80, for example, you can see how that looks like and what that does and why you should actually do that and put these items in a stack. Well, it's quite simple because if you want to change the places like this, for example, maybe I want to put the pricing here, it's going to retain the same distance of 60 that you put on the original stack. And like that is going to be quite simple for you to work on it. And finally, later when you want to do a responsive resize, for example, and to create this navigation for mobile, you can simply click right here. It's going to position them like so. And then once again, you can double click inside and organize these. So I want to put this icon here. Maybe I want to put this in a center like so. And I can always jump to my layers panel, for example, and simply select them all and make sure they are in a center like that. So that's how you use stacks for navigations and for text elements. And I really like to do this because as I said, it saves me a bunch of time. You can also do it for any uh, text layers. For example, we have this layer right here and we have this text. So if I hide it, we have all of these different items inside. So from collection tag to all of these to tag BG. So what I can do is simply put them in a stack like so. Make sure that my stack is vertical and you can see that we have now uh, different spacings. So if I have right here, here is 40, here is 40, but here is 60. So what you can do is leave it like so, or you can, if you want to, make the same stack like I showed you right here. So now I can simply double click and reorganize these. I can make sure that this is here. Just make sure this is here. For example, I want to put this here. Maybe I want to position this to be, I don't know, right around here. So what this is going to allow you to achieve is much faster workflows with your clients and when you receive a feedback to make some additional changes, it's going to be much simpler. Also, if you need to adjust some spacings, you can do it from here. So you can click on one of them and simply move it, or you can hold your shift, click, and it's going to uh, increase the spacings between all of them. My second favorite method to use stacks is with forms. So here I have my chatty UI kit. And if I zoom in, for example, on this form, what you can see right here is we have this background placeholder and we have these uh, form fields in place. So if I click right here, you can see it's named form. So what I can do is click right here and just make sure that this text is auto width. Make sure that this text is auto width. And what I can do is simply put this in a stack and also include padding by automation. What this is going to allow me to do with padding in place is if I start to expand these, you can see that it fills out, but you obviously need to put in some constraints. And finally, I should put them in separate groups like this and like this and finally like this. And now if I start expanding, as you can see, they are staying in place. Basically, what I want to say is using stacks and using these constraints like padding is going to be much simpler to use forms, especially if your client wants, for example, to replace uh, these places. And you can see with the padding, everything stays in put, everything stays in place. So for example, they want a smaller sign in button. Let's say maybe you want to do something like this. Maybe you want to round the corners a bit more. Maybe uh, they want to include a text in a different place, for example, like this. So as you can see, it's much simpler to work with forms once they are in a stack. And once you put everything in groups, it's much simpler to work with. And finally, my favorite method of using stacks is with images because oh, let's face it, images are everywhere inside of our designs. So using stacks to organize them in a nice uh, looking fashion is what I really like. So as you can see, we have this card right here. If I switch to layers panel, you can see it right there and we have a stack. So what that means is I can double click inside and replace the positions of these two. I can put them like so, and then I can easily with just a few clicks organize all of this. As you can see, it retains the spacing between our image and our text. So everything looks nice and clean. But once again, you can put all of these inside of a separate group. So as you can see, we have one, two, three, four of these items. So I can select all four of them. 
like so. Hit Control G, put them in a group, and then put that in a stack. And finally, once again, you can play around with horizontal or vertical stack depending on what you want to do. And this is especially great, this horizontal stack using these images. Uh, if you want to create these sliders, for example, if you want to create clickable components, so that can be really beneficial. As you can see, we have 150 for the spacing. Once again, I can increase this to, let's say 200, press enter, and you can see that we have much better spacing that we had before. Finally, one, what I want to show you with these uh, images is this. So, because this is in a stack, it's going to keep the spacing of 150, but what if I need to make a quick change to this stack? So what I can do is click on it and for example, put it like this. As you can see, all of them are still keeping 150, which is great, but because we didn't put these bottom elements inside of our stack, that's why they are staying that. So before we move on, let's do that really quickly. So I'll put all of it inside of our stack like this and I'll simply put the virtual assistant right here and now as you can see we have the spacing of uh, 150 for everything except for this one I'm going to bring it down to zero with my footer so now let's go back to this one and I'm going to put it to be vertical I'm going to double click on my image simply enlarge it and position my text into the center next I'm going to jump inside and make sure that my text is center aligned and make sure that it aligns with my button like this it's right here and there you go so I can simply expand this a little bit better to fill in my space I can double click on my artboard if I want to or click on the name of my artboard bring in my grid just so that I know where my constraints are I can double click inside and simply position it in the center like this and finally I can bring all of it like so and I can move the text a bit closer for example to somewhere like 60 or something like that yeah this works fine and there you go with just a couple of clicks you can see what you can do obviously now we need to uh, extend our artboard a little bit to somewhere around here and that's one feature I would like uh, XD team to bring in the future these adaptive uh, artboards especially with features like stacks and repeat grids and stuff like that we are able to create these complex um, layouts and animations in Adobe XD, but I would like to see some of those uh, features in the future. Thank you for watching this video and I really hope you found some value in it. If you did, make sure to press that like button. I upload new videos every single week here on the channel about Adobe XD, passive income techniques for designers, motivation and more. So if you're interested, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.